Hello everyone, my name is Elizabeth and I read bouquets and books. This is my second booktube video and I would like to start it by thanking everyone who watched my first video, who liked, who commented, who subscribed. Uh, this made me feel very welcome and this shows me that this booktube journey is going to be very enjoyable and a lot of fun. So thank you to everyone. In the second video, I will talk about the books that I read for the readathon organized by Katie from Books and Things covering books written or published between the years 1900 and 1950. Uh, there were various prompts, so I will go through them one by the one. The first prompt was to read a book by an author from the country where you're from. I'm from Canada, so I decided this was the perfect occasion to finally read Maisel de la Roche. Maisel de la Roche is probably the first Canadian superstar writer. Her series Jalna sold millions of copies worldwide. So th the first one that she published is Jalna, it was published in 1927. Uh, in this book, we meet the White Oak family that is comprised of six siblings, aging in range from nine years old to early 40s. The eldest son is the head of the family. Uh, there are also two uncles living in this house who are in their 60s, and one grandmother who is 99 years old and soon to be 100. So this book is really about about family, about uh, the tensions between the siblings, uh, between the generations, uh, the rivalries, but also the, the various ways in which love can be expressed. So for, for about half the book, I would say, we stay with these people, uh, with these, um, we, we learn what are the dynamics of this family, but about halfway through the book, uh, the dynamics change because um, some of the siblings get married. So new characters are introduced into the house and of course that changes everything and uh, that's where the story really picks up. In this first part of the book, uh, where we meet each character one by one, I was wondering how come the series was so popular, but afterwards when the dynamics changed and the way the book ended, I understood why people wanted to learn more about this family and read more about it. Uh, so I will certainly read the sequel at some point. Uh, not just right now, because I'm a bit busy with the book two prize, but I will certainly read uh, the follow-ups at some point. So that if you're interested in reading Jalna, either the first book, I should say this is not the first book chronologically. Uh, this is the first book that was published. It was meant to be a standalone, I think. But uh, because it was so popular, the, the writer wrote sequels and prequels. And um, so the first book chronologically is another one. If you want to read them, uh, they are in the public domain. You can download them for free. I will leave a, a link to a website where you can find all the Jalna books. All the Jalna books. Tons of books by Canadian authors that are in the public domain. A second book that I read for this prompt is A Tangled Web by Lucy Maud Montgomery. Now, this is a reread for me. I read that in French uh, when I was a teenager, so a few decades ago. And uh, it shouldn't have been a surprise uh, since I've read the book, but it was a big surprise. Uh, it was not good. <laughs> In my memory, it was a good book. It was a classic Lucy Maud Montgomery book with uh, quirky characters, with love stories, uh, with uh, um, little rivalries of small town Prince Edward Island. It has all of these ingredients, but the way it's presented, um, it's, it, it has construction problems, I think. Uh, at the beginning of the book, there's a massive reunion of all the members of the Dark and Penhallow clan. The matriarch of the clan is dying, and she decides to read her will in front of everyone. So she convenes everyone to the reading of her will. As the people enter the room, we meet them one by one, uh, we learn their story, uh, and it's just too much information because the characters don't interact with one another. They just arrive in the room, we are told what is their story, and they sit. And then someone else enters the room, we are told, we are told who they are, and they, they sit. And they don't interact with one another. And we don't know which ones will be important and which, which ones will not be. Uh, so this lasts for about 80 pages out of 300. And afterwards, we still meet quite, not quite, but we still meet a few more characters. And we end up following five storylines. Um, but then again, as we read, we don't know exactly which storylines will be more important than others. If you love Lucy Maud Montgomery, you may like this book. Uh, but if you don't, I would suggest do not start reading her work with this one. Uh, it should be just for completists. 
Um, oh, I should also say that there's cruelty to animals and that it ends on a very racist joke. So I was disappointed with this reread, but I'm nevertheless glad that I read it again because now I know that I will not read it again. <laughs> the second prompt was to read a book by an author uh, from a country where you do not live. So for this one, I read The Ivy, or Le Lier sur l'Arbre Mort in French, by Italian author Grazia De Leida. Uh, Grazia De Leida won the Nobel Prize in 1926. Uh, this book was published in 1908. We follow the main character, who is called Anessa. Uh, she's a servant in the house of the family that used to be the most important family in this Sardinian village. Uh, it used to be the noble family, the rich family, but they have fallen on hard times and now they are on the brink of bankruptcy. They are about to lose everything. Um, so it's, uh, it's once again a novel about family about relationships, but it's also about uh, decline, about crumbling sense of family, crumbling sense of obligation, uh, crumbling faith, um, because there are also religion crises in there. Uh, it's about uh, sin, I guess. It's about guilt, repentance, um, various things like that. Um, this is the third book that I read by this author, Grazia de Leda. And I loved it just as much as the previous two ones. Uh, she brings us in Sardinia. It's a, it's a book with a very strong sense of place. If you want to travel cheaply, just read a book by Grazia de Leda. You will be in Sardinia in no time. On the whole, I would say it's a whole, wholeheartedly recommend for this book. Another book that I read for this prompt is L'Immoralist, The Immoralist by André Gide. Uh, this book I saw on Gen, Gen the Librarian's TBR for this month. Um, this is a touchy book. Uh, André Gide is a problematic author, and this is a prom problematic book. Uh, problematic because uh, André Gide was in all likelihood a pedophile, and uh, this book is also about a character who is a pedophile. So it's uh, very uncomfortable, I could say. Uh, this is a book about a very selfish man. Uh, he marries to please his father. Um, he does not love his wife. However, when he falls sick, his wife takes care of him. But when his wife falls sick, he does not. Uh, well, he thinks he does, but he does not. Uh, he really lives for his own pleasure. He spends money he doesn't necessarily have. He doesn't look for consequences. He doesn't care for consequences. He just does what he likes. So this is another novel about decadence, about decay, about uh, crumbling family values. Um, uh, the biggest revelation for me in this book was perhaps that André Gide is not the great stylist that I thought he was. Um, André Gide has a reputation for being an exquisite writer, uh, for writing in, an, in a very elegant style. Uh, I remember in high school I was given one of his books as a mandatory reading. However, in reading this book, I was uh, a bit disappointed. Um, it felt to me like it was very stiff. It was a bit forced elegance. The only comparison I could think of was a face with too much Botox. And that's the writing of André Gide to me. It just has too much Botox in it. It's too, it's stiff. It doesn't move. Um, it's for show. It's, um, yeah, I didn't like it much. So on the whole, I would not recommend this book. Uh, as for recommending or not the author, I guess it's up to you. Um, he won the Nobel Prize in 1947, so it's not an insignificant author. Uh, and as I said, it's mandatory reading in many classes, so it's not an ins insignificant writer. But I suppose you can still learn and read French literature without necessarily reading André Gide. Uh, in Canada, he is in the public domain. So his book is also on the website that I will link in the description box below. So uh, I have a clean conscience in the sense that I know I did not give him any money. Um, yeah, but uh, this is a difficult theme. So really uh, for, uh, uh, for lecteur averti, for uh, advised readers only. The third prompt was to read a genre classic. Now for that, I read a few short stories by uh, J.K. Chesterton of Father Brown. 
Um, I thought at first I would read the whole book, The Innocence of Father Brown. Uh, this volume has two collections of short stories. It has uh, The Innocence of Father Brown and The Wisdom of Father Brown. So I thought I would read The Innocence of Father Brown. But after two or three short stories, I stopped because um, I did not enjoy them as much as I thought I would. Uh, the reason is quite simple, is that Father Brown is not present enough. Uh, in the few stories that I read, we have a mystery, some things are going on, we don't know exactly what. And then at the end, Father Brown shows up with the solution. Uh, of course, he explains the solution, he explains how he came to it, but we don't see him coming to this solution. So for a mystery, there's not enough sleuthing for me. So I only read two or three of them. The fourth prompt is to read a book that is not a novel. So for that, I decided to read nonfiction, The Book of Tea by Kakuzo Okakura. Um, this book was published in 1906, I think. Um, it's about the culture behind the tea ceremony. It's not so much, uh, it doesn't explain what the tea ceremony is. It doesn't explain no, how it is performed. Uh, but it explains the reason or the philosophy behind it. It talks about uh, the importance of beauty in Japanese culture, uh, how repetition brings uniqueness um, and various things like that. Uh, so it, it's an open window on Japanese culture of early 20th century. Uh, so for that, it's very interesting. It's also very short. So if you need something quick between two books, that is a good choice. Too. The fifth prompt was to read a book related to World War I or World War II. For that, I read The 25th Hour by Virgil Gorghiu. Uh, this was translated from the Romanian. It was published in 1949. Uh, Virgil Gorghiu is a writer who was also a diplomat for Romania during World War II. And you probably know that Romania was allied to Germany during World War II. Um, in this book, we follow Johan Moritz, who is a peasant, an ordinary man from a village called Fantana. Uh, it unfortunately happens that a police officer in, his, in the village wants to sleep with his wife, so he is sent away to a concentration camp as a Jew and undesirable. And um, I'm tempted to say that he was sent there unfairly, uh, but that supposes that some people were sent there fairly. Of course, nobody deserves to get there. Um, but the point of the book is that he was sent there unfairly because he was not a Jew and that there was nothing that he could do to correct the situation. There was no way that he could tell the administrators of the camp, excuse me, I'm not Jew, I should leave. And uh, it, it's meant to show how, how government machines dehumanize the people that they are supposed to govern. Um, the point of this book is not to show realistically uh, the horrors of the camps or the horrors of the war. Uh, in that sense, it's not a realistic book. I think it's more a symbolic book. Um, yeah, there are many layers of symbols. Uh, another character in this book is called Trajan Kruga. He is a writer who works as a diplomat for Romania during World War II. He is writing a book called The 25th Hour, and the main character is named Johan Moritz. So, uh, as I said, it's a book heavy with symbols. Uh, if you want something that is a realistic depiction of the camps, I would suggest reading something else. Um, but if you want something more a bit philosophical, a uh, reflection on the dehumanization of people in front of big government, uh, then this is a very good book and this is a uh, it gives a lot of food for thought. There was an extra prompt that suggested we read one book per decade, and it happens that I did. Um, the first, for the 1900s, I read uh, Grazia de Leide, that was published in 1908, André Gide also, and uh, The Book of Tea. For the 1910s, there was the Father Brown short stories. For the 1920s, Jarna. For the 1930s, A Tangled Web. And for the 1940s, Virgil Gorghiu. So uh, I covered every prompt. So this is what I read for this readathon. It was a very fun readathon. It's a bit of a shame it will not come back next year, uh, but perhaps maybe someone can pick up the idea and uh, make it an annual event. Thank you so much for watching. I will leave you with a few images that I took of Ottawa uh, these last few weeks. So uh, I hope you enjoy them and enjoy the fine weather. Uh, thank you and à la prochaine.